Uh, I guess had that had that good start. I think fourteen seven ahead early, and then uh, they sort of took sort of control. How sort of how did you see it? Yeah, I thought our, our start was was really positive. Um, the ball moved. Uh, we, we played from from inside out. We did a good job of getting bangers some touches early. Um, Sobs on the rim. We got ourselves to the foul line. Um, we defended with the right intent um, in, in terms of our disruption up the floor. Uh, we had a couple of breakdowns early in the pick and roll, uh, which which they hurt us on. Which is um, you know we, we made adjustments out of that in the first quarter. But in terms of sustaining it um, there. Their physicality, their depth, um, like that's a let's start with like that's a really really good basketball team um, who have been consistent throughout the year despite a little like patch where I think they lost three or four in a row. Um, but their their ability to sustain pressure, physicality, like really sped us up offensively. Uh, I think we had ten turnovers at the half, and you know they have eighteen points in transition in the first half. So. Um, you know, when you have that mountain of possession against you, um, it becomes really difficult. So, we we need to do a better job of, of handling that physicality um, and finding ways to put guys in positions of strengths when the when the heat gets turned up, um, and, and everybody's responsible for that um, to to different levels. And you know, we're going to be going to play Cairns in 48 hours' time, who are right around the mark of New Zealand, like they're fighting for a top two finish. And then we play these guys again in. Six or what is it? Eight, nine days time. So I know, like Sobes and the group talked about it in the locker room at, at post game. Is you know that's that's what it looks like. You know that's what a playoff basketball team looks like, and and the physicality and their intent to do it for 40 minutes. Um, so that's where we're striving to get to, and, and we'll keep moving forward and and be better on Saturday. After that run of three wins, was just a step up from those games like, uh, against the Breakers, um, the opponents and. You know where they are on the table and that. Yeah, I mean, so it's not head for sure. Yeah. Like that's, uh, you know, we we caught southeast on the back of an eight nine day break. We we get Adelaide uh, at home and you know they're they're trying to find their way as a group right now late in the season and clawing to make the playoffs and, and we get the Hawks. So yeah, it's definitely a different level. Like that's what the best one of the best teams in the league looks like and it, it certainly went up a couple of notches tonight and you know we we without. Jace without Harry, without Tanner, um, you know, it, it was it was challenging for us. There's no doubt about it. So it was it was still there's not an excuse. Everybody's been down on bodies. They've had injuries. Uh, the travel, the schedule, uh, everybody's been through it. So we've got to find ways to, to get it done. Even though we're, we're down a couple of key guys. I know. I know. Sorry that. Um, sorry, uh, Harry down. Uh, on Saturday. Uh, what about Jason? Yeah, they'll, they'll both be out. Um, Jace has the concussion and uh, he's definitely out for the remainder of this round and, and Tanner also with the ankle. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're the same group on Saturday night in Cairns. And the depth, you know, like, is that, like, sort of, sort of, sort of how tough does that, does that sort of make it? Or, or do you think that you have the depth to... You know, yeah, look, I, I mean, Saturday? it's in, uh, I think, in every crisis or every challenge, there's an opportunity for someone else. So guys like Cody and Rass and, you know, Gak, Tyrell, you know, other players that come in off that bench and, you know, make an impact on the game. And, and that's the challenge for, for those guys is that when Sobes or TJ or Baines or Drew or whoever comes out of the game, we, we, don't, we don't dip. Like, it, it needs to go up a level and, and crank it up. And how do you impact winning and how do you impact the game? Like, it's... Um, it's a challenge for those guys, but it's also an opportunity. And go and grab it with both hands because in this league, you don't know when your next one's coming. We've got two games left in this year and um, you know, we, we do have a lot of guys off contract. So like, making your mark and making the most of those opportunities is important for those guys. Yeah, I mean, just off the back of that, I think it also goes to show how important guys like Jason that are to the group. Um, when they go out, it's not an easy um, thing to fill. And um, I think that comes with um, more game time and, and more experience for those guys that do get that opportunity. Um, it's not going to just automatically happen. Um, I think guys put in the work and they deserve those opportunities, but it comes with the more experience and more time they keep getting uh, on the floor. But... What Vandy said and your question, nah, very good basketball team. And when they're playing well like that, um, they're very hard to stop. Um, so credit to them. They're, they're, they played some really good basketball tonight and they got a lot of depth in their unit, um, which will go a long way for them for the remainder of the games and then into the playoffs as well. So um, a lot of that has to do with them. We've got to be a lot better 
um, on both ends of the floor, but they're a very good basketball team. Um, just, just off the screen for a minute, what did you make of, um, of Cairns, uh, their choice uh, not to uh, not to the uniform with the uh, pride? Yeah, I, I, I think the the key word in that is choice. Um, you know, the league uh, put out a statement around that that um, everybody has choice in it. Uh, us, as a club, like we we can't control what others make other other people's decisions are made. So we, as a club, um, and the playing group, and and everyone from top to bottom, uh, support what this game is about. Like basketball is a global sport. Um, there is all walks of life play the game and it's a very diverse basketball community in, in, within our team and within the league as a whole. Um, I'm not just talking about the pride round, you know, the, the multiculturalism that exists in our game. It, it's, it's bigger than the individual. Um, so for us, like, we're an inclusive team, we're an inclusive organisation, we're an inclusive sport and, you know, we collectively made the decision to, to support what's happening um, with the Pride Round and it, it's a great initiative that, that the league's put forward. Um, it, the, the diversity that exists in our country and within the sport um, to, to recognise it and support it and be inclusive of everyone. Like, so our group made the decision, um, you know, Cairns are entitled to, to make the decisions that they made and um, their organisation will support that and their community will support that. So in terms of what they did in the best interest of their playing group, we, you know, um, looked at what's best for the, the sport as, as a whole, um, which is we are inclusive and we are diver diverse, so we represented that. So following on from playing without without Jace, how strange was it? I mean, he just doesn't miss miss games. How strange for you was it to actually go out there and play a game what, without him? What's the streak at? I don't actually know what it was at, but um, that's pretty ridiculous. But he's pretty furious with missing the game. You know, I think he's tried to keep that streak alive for a long time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've played here now, what, four seasons and every game he's been a part of that. So it was a little bit different to not have him run out there with the group. Um, yeah, it was a bit weird. Obviously, he's been running that streak for a long time. And, um, yeah, it, it definitely felt different, not just in terms of being next to him, like with him on the court, but just in the locker room and stuff. I think he's struggling a little bit with the concussion so we're hoping that he can recover from that as quick as he can and um bounce back uh but yeah it was it was different for sure how tough of a week for you as a playing group was it after what happened to to harry and have you been able to to get around him at all and, and offer him some sort of support this week yeah absolutely i mean the group will stand with him and his family and um we support him and everything he's going through right now and wish him all this, the best with the speedy recovery and he's on the mend now and um, we wish his family all the best with it all as well. Um, they're flying in and out uh, as we speak, like back and forth, trying to be with him and stuff as much as they can. So the club and us individuals are, are with him every step of the way and um, wish him all the best. I think it was after the Phoenix game where he talked about how he wanted you guys to play spoilers for teams trying to blocking playoff spots and you've got this chance again now on Saturday you can you can really put I guess the, the cat amongst the pigeons for the tight fans if you can knock them off yeah absolutely I mean he wasn't lying when he said it and we'll continue to try and play our best basketball and we're really focused on what we're trying to do as a group um to be better um night in night out and moving forward whether that be the next two games leading into the off season and how we approach the pre-season and next year as well we're not um, we're not shying away from all that sort of stuff. We know we're not in the playoff contention, but we are really focused on what we're trying to do as a group um, leading into these next couple of games. Thanks, guys. Here from me. I'm Jonathan. Uh, just a question for both of you. You guys are going to make the trip up to Cairns and it's going to be... It's always very difficult to play in the snake pit. Are you guys... Uh, Two-part question: Are you guys really looking forward to, to seeing the crowd up there in Cairns? And, and what are you looking at clean up before you head up there? Yeah, I mean, obviously that's part of the reason why you play the game. You go into different environments and get to experience those sorts of things. And they have a great crowd, and obviously they're playing for a lot. Um, the, the top two is in their uh, sight, and 
um, to be able to go into a hostile environment, um, it doesn't really get much better than that. Um, so we'll go in there and, and beforehand we'll focus on what we need to do better and what we think we didn't do well tonight and, and really plug into that. And hopefully uh, we come up with a, a game plan that, that is uh, great for us on Saturday night. And just on that, Coach, uh, Aaron Baines is coming back yet again to um, pretty much the place he grew up in. Are you hoping for a real, real big game for him uh, before the season closes up there in Cairns? Yeah, look, I mean, um, I think putting extra weight on one individual game um, probably does a disservice to, to bangers and you know his expectations of himself and, and our expectations of him um, as a group and and collectively like uh, I think he's going to come and play play his backside off every night no matter where we play so obviously going home um, probably has a, a little bit more meaning for him um, but it's certainly not going to change the way that that we approach it um, or, or what he's going to produce for us so um, I think at last time we were up there, he had a really good night. Um, you know, he's potentially without Pinder for Cairns. Um, he's going to continue to be a focal point of, of what we do, both offensively and defensively. And um, the production that we get out of him um, is, is going to go a long way to helping us be successful as a group. So I think, you know, the focus is on, you know, the team collectively, um, not any one individual. Uh, and, and that hasn't changed through, throughout this process at all. Hi, Coach. Hi, Nathan. I just have a follow-up question on uh, Harry Froling. Was the team aware of his condition prior to flying home last week, and is the club investigating that? Uh, look, I'll, I'll field that one. Like, there's what what Sobes has said um, is is probably all we have to say on on Harry. Uh, look, it is a police matter, and it's an ongoing investigation in, into the, the circumstances and everything that, that surrounded the incident. Um, Harry has, is obviously in hospital. Um, he's gone through the process and procedures that he's had. Um, we support him and his family through, through a really, really difficult time. Um, as things, more and more things come to light, um, the club will conduct their own inv investigation when the time is right. And, and put everything together and, and take the appropriate course of action in terms of um, how we manage the group um, and, and how we manage those situations on the road moving forward. So, look, it's something that, that's real and we, we certainly don't sweep it under the table and, and just ignore it. Um, but at this point in time, there's not too much else to say on that because, like I said, it is a police matter. Uh, the, the police are conducting their investigation and... Uh, we need to be respectful of that and also respectful of, of Harry and, and his family at this time. Uh, you know, Harry is a, a very, very loved individual, not just within this group, but with in the Australian basketball community, the amount of people that I've had reach out from all over the country to, to check in on him. Um, you know, my history with, with uh, the Froling family goes back a long way to my, you know, my time in Townsville where Shane, Harry's dad, was an assistant coach at the time. And... Um, was a very, very big part of my playing career and did a lot of very, very good things for me. So, um, yeah, out of respect to, to Harry and the family, um, that's probably all I've got to say on, on that matter. I appreciate the detailed response. Thanks, Greg. Any final questions? Yeah, Greg, Greg. Um, in terms of coaching uh, next season, will you, has there been any, like, any more talks with you on club or where's at the moment? Yeah, I think uh, someone asked me after the Phoenix game as well. Uh, the club's going through a process right now in terms of, uh, you know, selecting a, or identifying a head coach um, moving into the NBL 24 season. Uh, the club will continue to, to go through that process at this stage. Like, I've, I'm the head coach of the Brisbane Bullets for, you know, the rest of the NBL 23 season and whatever unfolds after that will, will be at the determination of the club. You know, uh, Sam... Our GM of basketball, Stu Lash, the senior basketball advisor, and Peter McLennan, uh, CEO as well as the ownership group, are, are driving that process. And uh, look, um, I'm loving being in the chair. Um, it's a challenging environment. Uh, I think the playing group has been great. We've had some lumps along the way, but every time we've found a positive response uh, to the challenges that we've been met with. So um, you will do the same thing, and rebound and play cans on Saturday night and we'll get another positive response from this playing group which is still 
has the intent to come intent to come and play and compete for each other and the Brisbane Bullets and our fans and our members every single night. So in terms of the head coaching process, I I haven't really um, you know banked on it or you know thought about it too much. Um, you know the, the club will conduct that in due course and um, hopefully we'll have answers next week, end of the season, wh whenever it is, when the club's ready to make a decision on that. Sweet. Thanks, guys.